I'm Tao from The Gloomy Light and welcome to my very first tutorial. Today I'll explain to you how to make new paper look like old paper. This process is called aging and luckily it doesn't require as much time as the name implies. There are many ways to aging paper, but I'll show you the one I use to make my stationary paper. This requires some plain white paper. The thinner the paper, the easier it is to stain, but the faster it will tear when wet. I find that regular 80 grams printing paper works best, but you can go heavier up to 160 grams per square meter. You'll also need some fresh, strong and hot coffee. When you are only planning on aging one or two sheets of paper, you can just put a coffee filter in a mug like this and make that your simple coffee machine. But we're going to make a set of five, so I'll make a full pot of coffee with this machine. I like to add some lemon juice for extra staining, so we'll also put that on the list. Then you'll need something to pour the coffee in, which will fit your sheet. I use this large plastic container, which I got at Ikea, and it fits about three sheets of A4 paper. I also use a metal tablespoon to push down the paper into the coffee without damaging the fibers. Then you're going to need something to dry your paper with. You can do this with a regular blow dryer, but a heat gun generally works faster due to its high temperature. It doesn't have to be a fancy one, I got mine at the local do-it-yourself store. You'll also need something to dry the paper on. What I find works very well is a metal mesh sheet with a towel on it. This allows the air to flow through so your towel won't be soaked after one piece of paper and the towel also prevents the mesh pattern from transferring onto your paper. When you don't have a sheet like this on hand, you can also use an oven rack. Just make sure your towel is thick enough. Use more towels when necessary so the lines from the rack won't transfer to your paper. Finally, you'll need something to make your paper smell less like coffee. A closable container and a scented dryer sheet or some potpourri of your choice works well. Talking about smell, if you don't like the smell of coffee on your hands, you can put some rubber gloves on so they won't smell like coffee all day. Now on to the action. First we're going to make some fresh coffee. It's important that you use hot coffee as cold coffee won't soak the paper as well. This is especially important when using thick paper, which is harder to soak. Make the coffee quite strong, as it will stain the paper better. While our coffee is getting ready, put down a container somewhere near your drying setup. My heat gun and mesh and towel are over there, so I'll put the container on the floor next to it. Now lay a few sheets of paper in the container. Next up is pouring the hot coffee onto the paper. Make sure you cover every part of paper and nothing is sticking out above the surface. Then add some lemon juice. The citric acid in the lemon juice will turn the paper dark when exposed to heat, so this will add a little extra staining on our paper. When the paper has been completely soaked, you can gently lift the paper from the coffee using your fingers. Be careful not to make any creases, because that will damage the paper's fiber and it will show up when dried. Unless you're going for a very distressed look, of course. By sliding the paper against the edge of the container, you remove any excess coffee, which makes it easier to dry and prevents coffee from dripping all over your workspace. Now lay the paper down on a mesh with a towel on top of it. You can start blow drying your paper now, but since we're making a larger batch, I'm going to add another sheet of dry paper to the container. Make sure it's completely covered by the liquid. You can use the back of a spoon to gently push down the paper without damaging the fibers. Now quickly return to your paper and plug in your blow dryer or heat gun. I generally set the heat to 250 degrees Celsius. This allows the paper to dry fast enough for a nice dark stain, but not too fast, so an even spots will be created. I also put on an extra wide nozzle to spread the heat evenly, but that's not a requirement. Begin heating up the paper until you no longer see wet coffee on the surface, but it hasn't completely dried either. Now flip the paper and continue on the other side. This way both sides will be stained more evenly. If you're only going to use one side of the paper in a scrapbooking project for instance, you can stick to only heating up one side of the paper. When the paper has completely dried, you can put it somewhere dry and clean until you've finished all the other sheets. Continue this process until all sheets are done. Doesn't this look satisfying? Now, you can smell this, but this pile of aged paper smells a lot like coffee. That's alright when you like this smell, or if you're using this to print out a menu for your coffee shop. But I don't really fancy the smell of coffee on my paper, so I'll need to take another step. 
Stick with me a little longer if you want to know how to make your paper smell like something you like. To scent the paper, I store it in a wooden cabinet. You can use any container for this, as long as it's got some sort of cover. Put the paper in the container and add the dryer sheet or the potpourri of your choice in between sheets. Let it stay in there for at least a few hours, up to a few days for a nice smell. I use this cabinet to store my paper until I need it, so some sheets will be in there for weeks or even months. Ta-da! And your paper is done! You can use this for all kinds of projects like scrapbooking, making postcards, writing letters to your friends. You can make it even fancier by adding a wax seal to close it, or use it for party invitations. You can add more detail by burning the edge a little, or distress it even more by adding new spots of wet coffee where the paper is almost dried. Thank you so much for watching! If you liked this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below if you want to keep updated on more of my tutorials. Also, if you use this tutorial to make something of your own, send me a picture of it, I'd love to see how it turned out. Many of the things I showed you today are available at my Etsy shop, um, thegloomylight.etsy.com. You can also follow me on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash thegloomylight and Instagram with at thegloomylight. Thanks for watching!